Hello, this is a bit of an experiment. So I've been taking quite a few uh, cohort-based courses lately and receiving one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. So uh, I've been using Miro to try to put everything I'm learning together. So, um, th so in order to have a better context um, as to what I'm doing, uh, to figure out a clear life direction. Um, and secondly, I, like everyone else, have crazy to-do lists. And I suspected that I often end up with exactly the same things that I put off because of some um, hidden fears or some uh, disconnection between the task and the values I'm going for. So I thought, okay, why don't I just like slap everything onto a Miro and see how it goes. And um, at first I thought, no, like <laughs> I went through all the f like uh, stages of grief, really. At first I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then I was like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? Um, but eventually um, it actually all came together and I'm actually really glad I did this exercise. So I'm filming this in case um, this kind of framework is helpful for you. Um, when it comes to managing your to-do list, um, um, figuring out how to break through some procrastination, um, and dealing with uh, the four horsemen of fear as coined by uh, Corey Wilkes. Uh, so one thing is that um, I, I'm i going to go through everything pretty quickly so this doesn't become an overly long video, um, but I'm very happy to um, speak a bit more about this system. Um, feel free to reach out to me. So uh, first I'm going to go into the uh, meta section. So um, as said, I'm recording this uh, for Corey and also for um, Chris Wong, who is um, offering a whiteboarding um, mural coaching service. So um, this is sort of like the pre-Chris edition. Let's see what this looks like after I talk to him. Um, and I'm going to uh, put this on my website. And, and also, uh, although it looks like there's a lot of items on here, sadly, it's not even my complete to-do list. However, these items are the ones that most frequently like re-pop up in my brain. And there are additional stuff, but like they are not even like primary on top of my um, to-do list right now. Um, but thematically, they're still, uh, they still hold true. So I think for me, um, I put in the black post-its, like my super, super core values. So fundamentally, I would like everyone in the world to be happy slash suffer less. And the biggest leap here uh, that I have to make in my head is that me getting myself out there is itself the service. So um, I also have red post-its where um, I talk about my fears or like uh, things I need to really explore to figure out some of my uh, like mental blockages about um, thinking of myself in this way. Um, however, I, I feel like just even uh, figuring out that there's a connection between happiness for all and me wanting to be much more audience forward is already a huge leap for me. So, um, and so for me, like the, the biggest difficulties is like this, it seems to be very little family alignment. Like this is historically the, the Chang family, um, were farmers and were focused on building a, like, you know, manufacturing business entrepreneurs and me diddling online. It just seems like a very far deviation from what my ancestors would have predicted or even my family would predict, I think. Um, but I feel like what I'm trying to do is embrace the fact that like, although they may not understand what I'm doing, um, at the core of it, I'm still addressing what I hope is uh, beneficial for the world. Um, and so for me, the other thing is, uh, although I'm very much about Buddhism, or maybe because I'm very much about Buddhism, sometimes I mistake this like vague feeling of like, oh, I shouldn't get attached to goals, therefore I shouldn't like lay them out too clearly because I might get attached to them. <laughs> or like, you know, I, I shouldn't have too much desires, even if they are like positive for the world, which is actually a very big misunderstanding about Buddhism that I also preach, but I need to take my own advice. So I think like um, being able to clearly lay out my grand plan for myself is actually really important as an expression of the Bodhisattva vow to be helping everyone else. Um, and so for the Corey's class, I was able to identify my core value of being self-acceptance slash spiritual maturity. And I feel like there are uh, some core things I want to do here. 
um, and there is uh, introspection as the secondary value. And what I thought was the third value was compassion. But I, I feel like now that I put this whole board together, although I like to say that I'm all about compassion, I realize a lot of what I'm talking about isn't. It's like a secondary effect of of um, what I'm talking about, and not the primary. So I'm wondering if like wisdom or like just focusing on introspection is actually a, a truer expression of my uh, values. Um, and so I being in in like pharmaceutical slash biotech marketing, I like to think of it as like I'm my own product, and like these three things are like the core pillars um, the uh, of my own like strategy. So um, in terms of like uh, big items I've been doing to address it, so I'm uh, thinking about applying to chaplaincy, I'm putting together more resources about interfaith dialogue, that's something I'm really interested in myself, um, definitely sit more in more retreats. Um, in terms of introspection, there is Corey's class, um, Chris, and then I've also um, been talking to Visa, and his book Introspect is very much aligned with what I'm thinking about these days as well. Um, yeah, so again, the third thing, I'm like, hmm, I think that actually needs some work. Um, okay, and then after that, with Corey's class, one of our homework was to lay out our plan for Until We Die. Um, well, he frames it in a much nicer way, which is like, you know, you time travel. There's a time traveler who hands you a book of your autobiography, and then um, you're supposed to name the chapters and what you've done in each chapter. So I did all that, um, which is really helpful. Like it's a very painful exercise because you're you might jinx yourself or not um, by naming what you think is going to happen in the future. But like with this like really long term plan, um, which is kind of like a product um, uh, pipeline of sorts, I suppose, um, it is really helpful for me to figure out. Okay, well clearly, if I want to achieve these things, I need to do these like um, projects and and tasks. Um, and then, uh, so what we're on to right now is um, Corey's also teaching us that like we need like to try to aim to do three needle movers per day, and uh, by doing this whole exercise of like gathering all my tasks, I can see that there's actually a few themes. So for me, like the what I call the red tasks are something that's always recurring that I always put off that has some weird fear attached to it. So um, I think I need to do just one of or like I should devote one of my tasks to th this painful red task. Um, however, I shouldn't do only red tasks because that would just want to make me want to like, you know, die. So I should do like one what I call meaty task, which is like to to build something. Um, and uh, thirdly, what I've noticed uh, from after doing all this is there's actually a whole like theme of tasks that are more about building myself as a content system or I don't know empire. Um, and I feel like um, and but the, however these are no, don't have immediate payoffs like building the system right. Um, so I always put it off because I'm like oh but there's no point in having a system if I have no content. And then like I start having these like internal debates about what I should be working on like sooner. And of course like uh, as most of you creators know like distribution is like really most of the game. So um, I get really hung up on like oh my distribution system how can I make it better? Um, and like I, but however I. I also like uh, don't work on the tasks, so I think what I can do to eliminate this debate and just be just, just be like, okay, look guys, this is split fifty fifty, and like you know, do one and one of each. Um, if I have that like you know mental like mental space available, so that I'm addressing both things. So just to take the debate out altogether. Um, and so I'm not gonna go into too much about each of these items, but maybe I will uh, zoom in on some of them um, in a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is talk about the four horsemen of fear first. And I think one thing to caveat is like when I say fear, I don't mean like I'm cowering in the corner, like you know, like an actual like fear. Like I think that's definitely we've all experienced. Like you know, you almost hit someone with your car or something like that's an like actual physical like fear and visceral fear. These are more like subtle background little nagging things that are um, a lot more insidious and uh, until they are named. So I am naming them like you know, as Corey calls them, four horsemen of fear, so that I can just be like. Dude, like I know you guys are here. Like you know, I like stop 
stop fucking with me. Um, so, uh, so one thing that uh, Corey also teaches is like, hey, like, oftentimes we feel tired or we feel we're lazy, but it is actually because we're afraid. And I completely, this point completely resonates with me. Sometimes, especially on the weekend when I'm like off on my own bizarre schedule, I can feel this a lot more when I'm like, oh, I feel so tired, but I didn't do anything. And oftentimes it's because I'm afraid of something because I want to, on weekends, I tend to want to work on tasks that are much like larger since I have more uninterrupted time and that's when these fears emerge uh, and so um, there are four like horsemen's that he names which is the fear of failure ridicule uncertainty and success and so for me like I feel like uh, ridicule is a huge one for me um, like most of my disagreeing parts um, are most scared of this and I think like uh, by parts, I mean like different parts of my brain. So if you'd believe in like internal family systems, it's almost like the, the different voices in your head. Um, so I, I feel like for me, oftentimes it's like ridicule and blame. Like they, they are very intertwined and I'm always afraid that someone is going to blame me for screwing something up. And therefore I would not do the test. So no one will ever find out that I screwed up something. So um, I think that's something where I need to learn to embrace embarrassment and attention, like even negative attention which some people on the internet do so well these days. Um, and I think I need to be able to just like deal with it um, and not let it overpower me. Uh, and then there's also fear of uncertainty and that manifests itself as like a lot of the tasks that I'm stuck on are the ones that I know if I do it, it's going to uncover that I haven't done another 10 things. And I'm like, oh no, like I don't want to like open that like Pandora's box. So, um, and the the other like um, fear beneath that is the fear that I'm going to uncover 10 more tasks and then they're going to be tasks that don't even relate back to my values. And I'm going to be even more lost in the labyrinth of, of to-do lists so um but however one like two like tactical things i can do is to map them back to my values or to just like delegate or delete um or defer forever or something but like on purpose so um i think i need to be better about that and then uh fear of success is actually a much bigger problem for me than failure uh, because i feel like success with success comes responsibility and again, I fear a loss of control over my time or deviation from my values. So um, th that is something that I that continues to happen, actually. So I'm mindful of that, too. Um, and the, the other two like components, I'm not sure where to put them right now, are expectations and blame. I think um, having a lot of expectations is, of course, like a burden. And um, my tendency to blame myself when things go wrong, but not care when things go right is also a, another issue. So um, the tactical thing would be to celebrate small wins, which is easy to say, but I think that's actually really hard to do um, and something I want to explore further. Okay, so, oops, <laughs> new to Miro. Uh, when it comes to work and home, um, so for work, I am uh, and also enrolled in the Small Bets uh, course uh, by Daniel Vassilo, and that's been instrumental. Um, I think one thing that, that comes from that is like you're placing bets onto different projects. And so uh, for me, figuring out which one is going to pay off and which ones to spend time on is actually something that trips me up quite a bit. Um, so um, something that I'm mindful of to not spend too long dwelling upon because it's like the indecision about which one to do comes from a fear of uncertainty, right? So um, how can I overcome that and then go back to the tactics to solve uncertainty? Um, the other bucket is credibility and attention, which is actually a subcomponent of small bet, but it's not so much um, uh, a particular um, product that you're making or project. It's about your overall like asset. And it's almost like in, when we consider assets, right? We have like financial assets. Um, but the other asset that is important is credibility and attention. And how can you build up both of these and make sure that even if your small bets projects fail, they're actually still contributing to credibility and attention. So um, for me, I um, am very interested in continuing to engage in the rite of passage world. Um, I think one thing, I won't say advantage, but one coincidence really is that I do know a lot of the mentors and I would like to um, interview them to and, and maybe ask for some testimonials um, because I'm also interested in applying to become a mentor in the future. Um, one thing that I have that's on my stuck list is actually finishing up my own essays from the last cohort. Um, and I realized from doing this exercise why I'm stuck. 
Um, so uh, a little divergence here. Um, so the reason why some of my projects stall now, I realize, is because my creator Overton window has shifted. So before, when I was like a, a newbie, like for me, like writing like five essays was like, oh, this is so monumental. And like, you know, which uh, the, fun the funny thing is intrinsically, yes, they are still monumental. However, now that like I'm starting to build a small audience, I, I'm like, oh, but if it doesn't like build me, a, like give me credit to what's this other thing I'm trying to do, then I don't want to do it. So it's actually a really rational thing I'm doing where I'm like trying to like weigh my bets as to what to spend my time on. How, so I think what I need to do is like to uh, almost like shift all my previous to do's from a previous Kristen into the values of the current one so that I'm not like fighting like the past and my future and the current me are actually fighting about what what needs to be done. So that's something to resolve. Um, another big item for me is actually in my nonprofit. Like, uh, there's a lot of administrative things that one needs to do who run a nonprofit, and like my, I tend to not be very rewarded by these, um, and which makes it worse because that means I keep putting it off, right? So, um, I think like for me, this is definitely a, a fear of uh, ridicule slash blame. Um, where, uh, and also uncertainty because administrative tasks can spawn new tasks very easily. So, um, this is another area I want to address today. Um, yeah. And then like, lastly, the content system. So I am seeing that like, in order to be a successful creator of one person, like how can I actually be as, um, prolific as like a, a bigger creator, like, you know, like a Mr. Beast type, right? Like, he has a whole, M like a whole corporation essentially representing his brand. And it's like, what can I do in order to um, achieve like, like, of course, like, you know, one from one like segment of the magnitude but without having to hire employees so um i've been thinking but one thing i really like to do anyway in my own free time is like fiddle with tools so i think what i need to do is uh, like do, do a lot of automation when it comes to uh, my content systems especially when it comes to addressing platforms that i personally don't like to browse very often um and uh, figure out how can i leverage the content that i do like to make like you know twitter and essays uh, and turn them into formats that's suitable for platforms like LinkedIn and, and Medium that I'm hardly ever on. Um, and also like um, engaging with uh, other creators. I think I have, I still have a lot of like fear about not being good enough or having a clear enough um, vector of where I'm going in order for creators to support me. Um, but I think like, you know, even with this exercise, I feel a lot clearer so I can begin to um, start the engagement process. Um, and yeah, so there's a few other things that are more like home and administrative that I won't go into today. Um, but essentially that addresses my entire world, really. Like, this is pretty much it. <laughs> like, um, so it's kind of nice because I feel like I've scoped out my world. Um, but one thing I want to um, figure out is like, um, a few tactical things. Like, number one, like my task list is changing all the time and also like, this isn't even actually my true complete task list. There's a lot more other projects I have that I didn't even put on here. Like what to do about that? Or maybe I don't have to do anything. Uh, I think number two, like aesthetically, like I'm not liking this whole like post-it everywhere look. I think I'm glad that I'm, I actually just like did it without over caring about aesthetics because it would have really slowed me down. Um, however, I think there's an opportunity here to make this look really pretty so that others will be very, um, will be interested to lay out their life in a similar way too. Um, I think there's a lot of value in that. Um, so as someone who's into every single productivity tool, I know there's actually very few um, to-do list management systems that actually account for values and the big stuff. There are a few, but they tend to be a little um, hard to use. Um, whereas I feel like um, things like Miro and my mapping software have that flexibility for you to visually arrange things that, that the, the way you like it, um, rather than being fixed to a format. Um, so yeah, I, I hope this is uh, helpful to anyone who's listening. I will post this on my various social media channels and uh, let me know what you think what you think about this whole system.